The town that Westonians and visitors admire is essentially a product of the late Victorian age, elegant stone buildings set among open spaces and trees. Most Victorian public buildings in Weston and many private villas were designed by local architect Hans Fowler-Price. In a period of relative prosperity following World War II, many buildings that had been lost to bombing were replaced. But the opportunity was taken, in Weston as elsewhere, to remodel town centres using modern materials and designs. Architects quoted the modern movement, but others were disappointed by the new, intrusive, one-design-fits-all functional boxes and preferred to use traditional local building materials and familiar design features. Western Civic Society was founded in 1973, one of many local amenity societies that began life around that time with support from the Civic Trust. The particular challenge was a proposal for a 14-storey block on the seafront, just south of Ellenborough Park. To boost their bid to make a tidy sum, the developers claimed that the seafront needed their building as a punctuation of a dull vista. The local authority was in favour of the scheme and it took a public inquiry at which the Civic Society was represented for the plans to be rejected. What was eventually built was less than wonderful, but also less than 14 storeys high. The Civic Society sponsored publications which explored the character of the town and its history. A series of local history trails eventually ran to five titles. A leaflet called Looking at Your House was produced with help from the County Council. It offered guidance on maintenance of Victorian properties, and was distributed by society members to households in the Stone Town. The society felt that, as well as publications, it ought to do something practical by way of example. The first practical project was the repair of the railings and gate pillars together with tree planting at Ellenborough Park West. The project was a success and attracted new members who lived in the area. Civic Society Awards were introduced to celebrate good conservation work in Weston, carried out by householders and developers. This former church hall received an award when it was restored and extended and converted into flats. Quite subtle improvements could merit an award too. The pair of houses had earlier been divided into flats with a front door between the two sets of windows. This was taken out, the original stonework reproduced and the garden wall reinstated. Other awards went to projects ranging from a rebuilt conservatory in Atlantic Road South to a new piece of front garden wall in Queen's Road. The Society inspected planning applications and submitted comments to the local authority. It became obvious that the Council's power to resist unwelcome development could be strengthened if conservation areas were designated, as they had been in many other towns. The Society published a number of conservation studies, dwelling on the traditional qualities of particular parts of Weston and the need to counteract threats to their integrity. It was made clear that the Society's plan for tree planting and the installation of a new wall and railings at the bottom of Grove Park would depend on the designation of a conservation area there, which would attract inward investment. The local authority was not keen, but an overwhelming display of public support at meetings organised by the Civic Society led to Weston's first conservation area. The promised work at Grove Park was carried out by trainees on the government-funded Youth Opportunities Programme. It would take much work and time to get the site back to anything like its former glory. Keeping the history and character of the town in the public eye was always a priority. An interpretation study was commissioned, and this recommended a heritage centre. In 1983, a warehouse in Wadham Street was bought with grant aid and an architectural heritage fund loan and converted using more government-funded labour. The centre told the story of the origins and development of the resort. While all of this was going on, 
practical work included restoration of the uphill windmill in Lime Kiln and of the wall and garden in front of the art school, another work by Hans Price. All of this was carried out by teams sponsored by the Manpower Services Commission. Public support for these practical improvements allowed the society to persuade the local authority that various buildings threatened with demolition should be retained and put to new use. These include the old Boulevard Hospital and the redundant Locking Road School, both including work by Hans Price and both handsomely converted into flats. A recent campaign by local residents, supported by the Civic Society, caused the council to reconsider its plan to replace the tranquil putting green at the end of the beach lawns with something considerably more brash. Weston was always planned with plenty of trees, especially along the streets. The north end of the high street leads straight into the trees of Grove Park and Weston Woods. What other town boosts such a view from its high street? The boulevard in flower makes for a wonderful show. The Civic Society planted and paid for many trees. Sadly, many have been felled and not replaced, even though this is stated policy. One can see the gap in the boulevard outside Tesco's. And there is plenty of other evidence. The boulevard. South side. Sometimes the holes are tarmacked over. Grove Park. And these are just a few examples. The problem extends over much of Weston. But this is just an example. The Civic Society presented a plan for replanting to North Somerset Council in October 2012. But there has been no satisfactory response. Happily, the town is flanked by Weston Woods and Uphill Manor with its trees. But other parts of the town are still threatened. For example, the site of the putting greens. Quarries are of a natural history interest for a variety of reasons. The first is that the steep cliffs create a place safe from terrestrial predators. Of special interest in the old town quarry is the peregrine falcon, the jack tools and the buzzard. The second reason is that a quarry contains bare rock without a covering of topsoil and this favours specialist plants. And the third is that the shelter provides a microclimate which favours certain species, especially when the quarry faces south, like the Old Town Quarry. Since the Old Town Quarry has been filled with other material, its main interest is that of the surrounding western woods. One tree in the woods is witch elm. This hosts a butterfly not often seen, the white letter hair streak. Its caterpillar feeds on flowers and leaves. The butterfly often flies high. And there are other local species of moth on which elm like the clouded magpie and bloomer's rivulet. And other woodland species abound. A local one is the little thorn. The larger mammals are those found in the adjacent woodland, fox, badger and squirrel although some would regard them as having more nuisance value than natural history interest. A nature trail around the quarry can be used with a specially prepared leaflet. The Western Supermare Trust, an offshoot of the Civic Society, formed itself as a building preservation trust. Its first ambitious project involved purchasing a Baptist chapel and converting it into an art centre to be called the Blakey. Using labour supplied by the Civic Society's employment scheme funded through the Manpower Services Commission, the frontage was restored to something like Hans Price's original design. The Blakey is now run by the Town Council and all the work was done as part of the Western Heritage Project. Enjoying Our Countryside, a strategy for the future, was published after a two-year study, funded in part by the Countryside Commission. Submitted to the local authority, this set out proposals for the immediate surroundings of Weston. A new series of countryside trails was published, Kewstoke and Sand Bay, Uphill and Hutton. The Old Town Quarry was leased from the local authority in 1989. 
and clearance work was done by volunteers. In 2001, the Society restored one of the quarry buildings to create eight studios for local artists and an exhibition room. This was done with the support of a grant from the Regional Development Agency. The Local Heritage Initiative funded a study of the story of the stone town, which led to yet more publications and a set of on-site interpretation panels. The Disabled Discrimination Act put a question mark over the upstairs exhibition rooms at the Heritage Centre in Wadham Street. That led to the decision to transfer the Society's headquarters to the town quarry. The proceeds of the sale of the Heritage Centre were invested to be used toward an eventual reinstatement of a Heritage Centre. The exhibits were put into store at the quarry, though some have been used in a permanent exhibition on the story of the stone town. Work continues at the quarry, uncovering archaeology and restoring battered structures. The Way Bridge was restored to working order by volunteers and the adjacent hut fitted up with a display explaining its history. The quarry is now the base for the Society's practical work, directed toward preserving and interpreting the industrial archaeology and history of the site. The latest piece of practical work at the town quarry is the restoration using recycled materials of the former blacksmith's shop, which now has its own exhibition of tools and equipment found at the quarry. Nowadays, in common with the amenity movement elsewhere, there is an added emphasis on sustainable solutions. These include a toilet employing reed bed technologies and incorporates photovoltaic water heating. The quarry is symbolic as the location out of which the town was born. The history and development of the stone town can be traced there. It is treasured as a peaceful place where wildlife can prosper, where art and craft can be made and displayed, and where environmentally friendly solutions can be understood. This film was made to mark the first 40 years of the history and achievements of Western civic society. The next 40 years will present many similar challenges and many fresh solutions will be worked out in new ways by new people. The aim will always remain to celebrate, protect and enhance the town that we love. <laughs>